Pull your pants up. Where's your glove, son? What are we doing? You gotta swing the bat. Come on, we don't have all day. It's okay to slide. Your mom sent me an email. She said she loves doing your laundry. Sorry, there's no sorry in baseball. Son, have you thought maybe the pitching is not the best career option? It's okay if the ball hits you. At least you're gonna get on base. Are you high-fiving the other team? You no, know, you're losing the game, right? Whose dog is that on the field? Um, did you forget your glasses? Who brought the snacks today? I'm getting hungry. Drop and give me 20. What'd you do with the money your mom gave you for all the batting lessons? Kid, that pitch wasn't even close. It wasn't in the same zip code. Uh, ben Franklin called. They got some craft uh, classes going on right now. You might want to check it out. You know that thing, leather thing you got on your hand? Yeah, that's a glove. That's what you use to catch balls with. Hey guys, stop knocking on each other's cups. Yeah, you're not gonna need your batting gloves. It won't do you any good. Hey Jimmy, is your mom coming today? Bobby, I just checked the girls' softball team. They need you. Come on, wild thing. Make a play for Pete's sake. What? You're Pete. You gotta actually swing to hit the ball. You just have to throw strikes. It's easy. Is that the same sheep? That strike zone's mile wide. I mean, you literally can't miss, but you're doing it. I just called your grandparents, told them they don't need to come. They're not gonna see anything. Your dad says he might not come and pick you up if you keep pitching like that. Welcome to his Creek Workshop. My name is Yuchel. I know it's been a while since I gave you an update on this grinder, but uh, I've been a little busy. Uh, April, May, and June is when I help coach my son's little league team. So finding the time to get in here and uh, do stuff, make videos, is, uh, it's not easy to come by, but I did make some progress and I'll share with you where it is. Here's a quick sneak peek right there. Whoop, did you see it? Huh? One more time? Huh? Ah, yeah, it looks good, huh? I got the head removed from the column. It's held on there with two bolts and screws that go on the side right here. And you have to take that off through the opening. Now, let me show you the side of it. You'll notice this part is machined, it's sawn. That allows it to tighten and clamp the main spindle. And because of that, really the only solid part is right here, it's about 3 8 of an inch. And uh, this brass shim goes in there and you clamp onto that. That prevents you from over tightening. But what I'm getting at is this is really fragile as it stands. So you're gonna have to be careful as you're handling this and cleaning it so that you don't accidentally crack right here. It's cast iron. Uh, it's not the most uh, durable uh, metal there is. And they also machine that flat there. So it's really thin. The head and the saddle are stripped. I did end up using pneumatic air needle scaler on the head. I'll describe a little more on how I did that to prevent damage like I described earlier in the video. But right now we are doing some spot de-rusting. Like right here, the slot back, there are some uh, little thin coats of uh, rust. And I don't have enough to dip the whole thing. So what I'm doing is I'm using evapor rust and I'm dipping some in paper towel and I'm rubbing those spots and I'm keeping it wet. You don't want it dry and just let it do its job. This is a second application. This was a lot worse down here as well, and the slots down here. And if you have stubborn spots like over here, you can use gray uh, scotch Brite pad. Take that rust off after evaporust does its thing. A little more to go on there. To wash down the evaporust, I'm going to use some alcohol. It got beat up quite a bit with a hammer or something. 
it's all right it's just where the accessory mounts doesn't have to be pretty all right i got the head all prepped and applied masking tape where i do not want any filler on but i wanted to come back and talk about uh, how i stripped the paint on this i said like uh, earlier that i was going to use a paint stripper well, I decided to go ahead and use my needle scaler anyway because the more I used it, the more I realized it actually has a very nice trigger control that I can feather the amount of force that I'm putting in on it, on the head. Remember, um, this is machine slotted, so only this tiny thin piece is what's holding the top to the bottom. So didn't want to just bang away at it but that trigger control worked pretty well so let me talk a little bit more about this this is nothing special it's just an Amazon uh, item I bought I think it's 60 bucks basically it comes in two different styles one is long straight style or pistol grip style like this I got the pistol grip because it would be easier to apply the force versus straight you're just you know having to put a death grip on it uh, the downside to the pistol grip is that almost all of them they just uh, just an adaptation of an air chisel or air hammer that already exists so this part is a needle they just adapt to it on this one as you can see it just threads on there and there is like a cylinder that's threaded uh, that goes on to that the problem with this is as I'm using it and it's pounding away at whatever you're stripping it unscrews itself uh, and you you have to screw it back on uh, even if you're holding it it just comes undone it's annoying I mean it's cheap the other thing is that female threaded part in there is held onto this thin uh, metal with three set screws well the metal is so thin that you may have only one thread engagement on those set screws so no matter what you do those set screws come loose and there was a time when all three of them came loose and they were landing and sitting on the floor I didn't realize fortunately I found them put them back on and I just wrapped some electrical tape around it Loctite I don't think would keep it on there either from all that vibration so just something to be aware of I don't think the straight models would have that same problem because they're more purpose-built but again the pistol grip made it a lot easier to use so trade-off plus it was only 60 bucks uh, even Harbor Freight ones are around 100 um, they have cheaper ones, but they don't have as many needles and the needles are a lot smaller in diameter. So overall, uh, I'm happy with the result, a performance. I don't think I would want to use it every day, but then you probably want to invest in a better tool anyways, but it did the job well. Let me quickly show you what the underside of the saddle looks like. Now this is after about half an hour of cleaning and scrubbing. It was obviously kicked on with old uh, 
oil and the grinding stone dust uh, sludge. A lot of mineral spirit and some brake cleaner with the brush, steel brush and compressed air and got it all cleaned up. Now, yeah, it doesn't look pretty, but you know what? It is uh, the way it is. I mean, it's, it's uh, the red you see is red oxide primer from the factory and uh, it's still on there. I'm just gonna leave it. It's the underside of the saddle. I mean, you're really not gonna see it, you know? We're not gonna go crazy and try to uh, paint this or anything like that. What? Don't judge me. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Okay, I think this is ready. I just got done degreasing, but I wanted to show you something. I'm just using a piece of stick. Oh, the casting looks pretty straight, except right here. There's a big hump right here that is about oh, a quarter of an inch high. And there's just no way to level that out with body filler. Uh, only option is to grind that down, but that's a lot of metal. Uh, I don't want to do that because I don't want things twisting or whatever. So it's not going to look as good as we like, but you know what? I won't tell if you don't tell. All right, we'll just try to blend it in as much as we can. Yeah. I got some metal spreaders to try. I don't know if they're going to be better. Ooh, I may have mixed it a little too thin. Let's take a look at hand wheels. These were nasty and I had, they had probably what, five, six different coats of uh, layers of paint. I stripped it all off with a paint stripper. I used um, aircraft stripper and also citrus strip. They work about the same. And I dunk them in evaporust overnight and got rid of all the rust. Now this is how it looks coming out of that. A little surface flash rust, but they just rub off. Anyway, 
that's how it looks. Not bad. The original casting texture looks really good and everything. Uh, no major dings on the, hand, uh, on the touch surfaces. And this one right here, I just rubbed down with ultra-fine Scotch-Brite pad. And it's got that nice, smooth satin finish. And that's what I was going to go with. But then, you know, I can't just leave things alone. So I took it to my bench grinder that has a uh, also Scotch-Brite wheel on it. And it just shined it up and I uh, thought, well, that looks pretty. So that's what I'm going to do to the rest of these. And then we'll mask it off and we'll paint the inside the same color as the body of the grinder. Should look beautiful. I got all three wheels polished on the bench grinder and I just taped off where the paint uh, doesn't need to go. Uh, so as you can see where the hand touches it'll be bare metal. But here we're going to prime and paint. Just need to find some time when it's not raining outside. It's been raining a lot here in the Pacific Northwest this spring, more so than usual. I painted the hand wheels and let them uh, sit and cure for a couple days and I think they turned out great. These particular wheels have a groove on both sides that made it really easy to mask. I just applied some masking tape and then took an X-Acto blade and scored it around those grooves and gave me a perfectly circular masking. Now, I didn't notice this, but this particular wheel must have had a damage before or excessive wear. They re-sleeved and key that hole. So that surface is not even, but I decided that I didn't care. It's going to be on the side and uh, nobody will see it. Anyway, it is beautiful. Now, I don't remember if this is the one that was at the front. Uh, sustained a lot of dings. But, uh, you know, just polishing on a Scotch-Brite wheel uh, made it nice and shiny. And uh, there's just no way to remove all of the dings. Now, if I left it like this, it's going to start rusting up. So I'm going to apply some uh, corrosion protection to it. I use Boshiel T9. I'm not sponsored, but I've been using this for over 20 years. It works great on preventing rust on uh, certain kind of uh, surfaces. Like if you're a woodworker and have a massive uh, cast iron table saw top, works great. On these hand wheels, works great. Milling table, uh, great. It uh, dries and doesn't leave oily surface. So we're going to spray some on this paper towel. and we'll wipe it on. Now you, you can just spray it on and leave it without wiping it, but then, you know, the surface would be uneven. Now it's wet and we'll let it dry. It'll dry in about 30 minutes to an hour and uh, it'll feel nice and smooth and not oily and it'll prevent from rusting. There's a tip for you. Before we can reinstall the columns, we need to install this. And this is uh, the elevation uh, adjustment shaft. There's this outer sleeve with bearing. I believe there are two bearings in there, we'll find out. And there's a worm gear. So when you crank the handle, this worm gear turns the mechanism, another set of gears that raises and lowers the wheel head. And I just degreased it and I noticed something odd with this. So let me show you what's going on. Like I said, inside here is, uh, I believe, well, maybe one bearing, but this is a bearing retaining nut with a locking washer. You notice this turns. Well, so there's about 20 to 30 thousandths of uh, excessive play there. Let me see if I can show it better. If you look right here, see that movement? As far as what that means to the precision of the machine, uh, I don't think a whole lot. I mean, you're measuring the movement, actual movement of the wheel head and everything. But that does 
make it really annoying where you have to turn your wheels a lot before you get any movement. That backlash is uh, kind of gets annoying. Um, once you raise and lower the head to the right elevation, you lock it in place anyway. So it's not like it's going to move on you while you're grinding. But nonetheless, we want to know what's going on. So let's open that one up. That locking nut looks like somebody just beat on it. So there's a keyway for the locking washer to fit in. Makes sense. There is no bearing. Just looks like bronze bushing pressed in there. Another one here. That's just an interesting design. I guess we'll just uh, clean and re-lube it and put it back together. Uh, the shaft right here is machined with the relief right here. Uh, raised spot there and there. And uh, those are the only spots needed to uh, rest on that bushing. One of the things I like to do on all precision uh, surfaces is to use uh, precision flat ground stones. Uh, these particular ones ha are from ki uh, Kinetic Precision. I've had them for two years and they're just amazing. What you do is rub two uh, like surfaces together and I gently go over these precision surfaces to remove any burrs because, well, I try to be careful as I was disassembling it, but you just never know. Uh, things may have gone banged on it or whatever. So you want to remove any burrs and you would know you just lightly roll it over and you'll feel it when it catches on burrs. Wow, hear that? It'd make a nice bell. And this surface feels good. I felt a little bit of a burr, raised burr right here, uh, right along where they machined it. And you can see a little bit of a shiny spot right there. That means uh, the stones removed the burrs and uh, it's going to be a nice uh, smooth fit when we reinstall it. Okay, let's put this back together. I cleaned the inside of these bushings. They don't look bad. We're gonna put some whey oil in there. That's what gets fed through the uh, one-shot pump on the machine anyway. So we'll put a light coat on this side. And we'll do the same thing on the shaft. I gave that nut a nice uh, wash with isopropyl alcohol. Let's uh, fit this back. I'm going to apply some T9 to parts where it does not get lubricated just to keep the rust at bay. Although 70 year old, it's done pretty good, I guess. I was cleaning these dials and I thought I would stop and show you what I'm seeing. Um, they all look like this, really dull, somewhat pitted and didn't look good. But here it is on that Scotch-Brite wheel on the bench grinder that I showed you earlier. How nice that is. Right here, I haven't done it yet. See how dull that is? Right here is nice and shiny because I did it all. Every time I use that wheel, I'm just amazed how well it works on these. Um, I don't know if I'm going to touch up the graduations or not with paint. Uh, that's a lot of work, feeling lazy, but uh, I thought I'd show you before and after. We are finally ready to reinstall this elevation screw assembly. Whole thing gets pressed fit into the housing. Basically this part right here and this part gets pressed fit or push fit whatever whatever you want to call it and there's a one bolt that uh, tightens against this flat area and 
maintains it. There's one part that I'm kind of confused about and that is oiling. Right here is a bushing, bushing, and this part of the shaft mates with the bushing in the main base, but there's just no way for them to be lubricated. I can see the worm screw uh, oil migrating and lubricating that bushing, but as far as ones at the far end, I'm not sure. So if you guys know how those get lubricated, uh, please comment below and let me know. But for now, as I assemble, I'm going, well, this part I already lubed, but uh, I'll make sure that part right there gets lubricated plenty. I'm going to have to lubricate the whole thing to make sure it doesn't rust up anyway. So uh, please comment and let me know. I'm just using some lightweight spindle oil for these sliding surfaces. These do not rotate once you assemble it. I am going to use some whey oil in this bronze bushing. We'll put some on the shaft as well. I did pre-fill the gear mechanism inside that has a little bowl that holds the oil. But I'm going to score some on this one gear as well. And I messed up. I wasn't paying attention. Ah, let's pull this out again. I messed up. Remember the sleeve has a flat spot, the bolts in the front, and I marked it right here, but it just, I didn't pay attention. So let's do that again. Well, so fun that I had to do it twice, but that's all right. Sometimes that's how it goes. We'll probably need to go in a little deeper, but to get it exact right, we're gonna install the graduation wheels and hand wheels, and we'll squeeze those tight together. But we're gonna put some lube because really this just rubs against the uh, case and also the shaft. Just very thin coat. Let's mount the hand wheel. I polished and installed this knob. It just presses uh, presses in there. There is not screwed or anything. So I just put a towel over and whack it with a mallet and uh, it's good to go. I always put a little bit of oil on the thread. I like it. You hear a little bit of dragging and that is this uh, dial wheel. It just moves and uh, I need to make a new thumb screw there because the ones that came with it are all joed up. I say it looks good. All right, let's see if we can get this in there. Should be engaged in the gear now. Yep. Well, that went better than honestly I anticipated. I tightened the travel lock bolt underneath so it stops properly. You don't have to worry about coming out or falling down. It moves nice and smooth. Like I said, there's some discoloration, but you know what? There's going to be a cover over it and uh, Nobody's going to see it. So if you don't tell anybody, I won't either. Let's go to the next step. One of the most enjoyable part of having a YouTube channel is fan interactions or viewer interactions, I should say. And this week I was wonderfully blessed when a gentleman named Eric reached out to me and said, Hey, I do have a Cincinnati number two. Uh, he's getting ready to uh, scrap it. But if there's any part on there that I would like, he'd be glad to send. Well, we exchanged some emails and he sent me this wonderful and heavy package. So let's open it up and see what's all in there. Wow, look at that packaging. 
Wow, there's a piece of plywood. <laughs> Screws holding this band. This band is to hold a uh, dust cover around the column. And uh, he could have just thrown it in there, but no, he wanted to make sure it stayed in there. So that's really awesome. Wow, he put spacers on there. That's really kind of him. What have we got here? Oh yes. This is the dust cover bellow that goes around the column. Uh, mine does not have that, and they put some sort of a red tarp around it, but it's just not working very well. Now this one has seen its better days. Uh, I guess looks like it was painted over part of it anyway, but uh, it's coming off already. So I think I'll be able to clean it up pretty easily. Now, Eric did mention that there is a tear right here in one spot. But it looks like I'll be able to patch that up with maybe some bicycle uh, inner tube. I tried to find a replacement for mine. And I've seen a couple dealers listed for sale for around $400. And uh, I, I've been you know, checking on them, but they've been back order for over a year now so I don't think anybody has it anymore so that's really cool also he sent me his belt it is in better shape than the one I have uh, these are you can find them but they're about 100 bucks or more this one's usable and here's a spindle oh nice this is a head rotation locking bolt. Here's mine. When he sent me is in better shape. These are uh, go on the head and it clamps onto the sleeve of the spindle uh, so it doesn't move. He did send uh, an extended arbor. That's really cool. It allows the spindle to stick out a little further. I've wanted one of these. And other than some surface rust, uh, no dings or damages, it can easily be cleaned up. And look at that, he even made a wooden cradle to go on it. That's so awesome. It is the same spindle. Yeah, the preload on that is not set right. It probably was uh, disassembled. This side. Oh, that's smooth. There's a slight, very slight tick in one spot. We'll be able to better see once we take it apart. It's good to have another spindle. Uh, so between this one and mine, uh, I think we'll be able to put together a good spindle. I do have some other bearings that I bought that I'll uh, show you later in a video where I rebuild a spindle. But it's awesome. Thanks, Eric. And I just, I'm very grateful. Here's the bellow that a viewer sent me. I gave it a good soak and clean in my kitchen sink my, while my wife was at work. It was spray painted over at some point and I tried um, mineral spirits and a few other things and uh, it's not coming off. So we're gonna try citrus strip, see if it works. This is just a six inch PVC pipe I had laying around. Well, it's been about an hour and Let's take a look. I did have it covered with a plastic garbage bag to keep it from drying out. This is a plastic brush, not metal. Seems to be working. Probably have to apply a second coat on some of the areas where it really didn't want to come off. But like right here, look at that. It's all coming off. So let me finish this up and I'll bring you back. 
Well, this is how it looks after two applications of citrus strip paint remover and a nice good uh, soak and scrub in hot water in my kitchen sink. Uh, the paint is gone. That's the good news. Um, some of the surfaces have uh, checking on the outer surfaces, but it doesn't go all the way through. It's pretty nice and smooth. Um, or other portions, it looked new. Now there are few tears that we need to uh, address. Like here, there's a really tiny one, but here's the more um, bigger challenge that we have to deal with. And this would be at the top. That is about five inches. So we need to figure out how to patch those cuts. And I can see uh, the upper flange portion here where um, ring band comes in uh, secures it. There's some cracks there and there. So I don't know. We may have to reinforce the whole upper lip. That's gotten some uh, abuse looks like. That's why it's all coiled and not looking good. So we'll see what we can do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tape this uh, big tear shut from outside so we can keep that shape properly. Went to Walmart and got me a Goodyear 27 and a half inch inner tube. I was tempted to buy 27 inch, but I didn't know, you know, the Murphy's Law. I was going to need the last half an inch for something. We'll cut it big. I got some emery cloth. I'm going to roughen up the inside surface where we'll be making the patch. We'll roughen up the inner tube as well. I went to auto parts store and picked up some tire and tube vulcanizing cement. It is uh, rubber cement basically. Oh, it's a lot runnier than I remember. It's not bonding very well. It doesn't have any smell either. Shouldn't it have some strong chemical smell? <sighs> I have to go to plan B. Well, after that miserable failure, I'm gonna try contact cement. Rubber cement, contact cement, not the same thing. And we'll apply it to the other side. We waited about 15 minutes for the contact cement to set. I also notched to allow it to curve around it better. Yep, 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 yep. Oop. Contact sticks. Oop, oop. I'm not doing good. All right, just straighten up some of these. I was never good with contact cement. It's like when I had to do laminate countertops and things, it always just gave me a hard time. And I'll massage it and kind of fold over the crease right there. Well, the repair turned out all right. The big tear, cosmetically, it's not the prettiest, but it seems strong. And there was a tiny one right there that turned out pretty good. So we're going to mount it on the machine. Uh, I'll have that face the rear so we can have the nicer portion visible for the operator. Before we can mount the inner column and the wheel head, we have to mount the bellow first. This is the bottom mounting flange. Um, didn't look like this, but I gave it a good polish on the scotch Bright wheel. And here is a top clamp. I also polished to make it look nice. To make my install easier, I did put a thin strip of double-sided fabric tape. I've used these Duck brand uh, fabric double-sided tape before to hold carpet, two pieces of wood, and it's very strong.
Uh, there's a, like I said, checking, but it just seems to be on the surface level. So it may have been exposed to uh, some sort of chemical that was not compatible, but it doesn't go all the way through. And that should keep the dust out of the main column. So I'm happy with that. And once again, I'd like to thank Eric for sending me this bellow and other parts that he wasn't going to use. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's try this. I'm moving the engine hoist. Well, I'm blocking the engine hoist with my foot and I'm just moving my foot out of the way to let the engine hoist inch forward. There we go. Now there's a oiling screw, so we need to oil the bottom of the the head before we let it completely sit or just put oil on top of the column. Well, that wasn't the best way to put the head back on, but we got it done and it looks good. Let me zoom in and show you how the paintwork on the head turned out because I don't think I've shown it yet. I'm very happy with how the grinder's looking and I would like to thank Eric who sent me his uh, parts from his grinder so I can get mine uh, progressing the way I really like. So uh, thanks Eric. And here's a little public service announcement. Uh, even if you don't have kids, you should go check out your local Little League baseball games. Uh, these young guys work hard, and gals, I should say, because they're a softball league as well. Uh, you know, a little six-year-old to, you know, 12, 13. And they work hard, play hard, and they're really fun to cheer for. So get out there. There are usually three, four days a week where they have games uh, throughout the day, especially on Saturday. So, Go out there, pick a team, uh, cheer for them. You'll have fun. They're, you know, they're gonna have fun, and I'm sure they'll appreciate you being out there. So, until next time, thanks for watching.